a compound problem that you know nobody's really been able to resolve. It's gonna be a good helmet. The concept's relatively simple, but the solution is actually quite complex. Groundbreaking technology, but at the same time really simple. One of my things is not to play with is the head injuries. So anything that's gonna help with that, I'm I'm all on board for it. So if we can take some of that energy transfer out of the equation at all, it's a good thing. You can't put a dollar sign on your head. You know, I'm a longtime motocross racer. I've raced pretty much my whole life. I've experienced personally and uh, through my relationships many concussions uh, over the years, uh, including uh, traumatic brain injury. The idea I came up with um, actually one day when I was road cycling and just thinking about the problem. I really wanted something that would reduce the low threshold energy transfer to the head, as well as address the need for uh, managing angular acceleration. I immediately called my friend, Robert, who uh, is an engineer and a, just a, a brilliant guy when it comes to uh, suspension and engineering and such, and I said, hey, I've got this idea, and uh, there's gotta be a better way to approach something. To me, it hit home uh, with my uh, elastomeric suspension designs that I did on, on bicycles. I spent a great deal of time working with elastomeric products and damping systems. Robert and I started putting pencil to paper and sketching up designs and trying to analyze what challenges we might run into as we tried to solve this problem. In our lab, we test bicycle helmets, we test equestrian helmets, we test military helmets. In a motorcycle, motocross, off-road crash, uh, the, the probability of you going off the bike at a fairly low speed is, is quite high. So, you're going to fall to the ground from probably four or five feet. And when you're doing that, your impact velocity into the ground is probably only gonna be about 10 or 12 miles per hour. The helmet has to effectively protect you at that type of an energy level. And that energy level is critical because if you look and think about all the different types of crashes you can get into in a motocross accident, by far, those are the type of crashes you're gonna get involved in. So it made total sense that if we could bring some kind of technology like that, that we could uh, bring significant success in reducing the amount of energy transferred. You're working with EPS foam. That's what does the job to protect the brain in an accident inside the helmet. It's EPS, expanded polystyrene. Our technology rides between two layers of EPS foam. Um, it creates an air gap and it gives our helmet the ability to uh, suspend an inner liner within an outside EPS liner in the shell. And that inner liner uh, has the ability to move omnidirectional. It can move in any direction, rotate any way, and, and um, that's actually where we got the name of the company from, 60, six degrees of freedom. Most traditional tests are what are called drop tests, in that we have a monorail tower that basically controls the motion of the head form. It usually drops vertically onto a plate or a, some other type of anvil. The human doesn't travel just in one direction. We need to understand three-dimensional motion. The angular acceleration is a much greater challenge because what you have to be able to do is you have to figure out how you can slow the head down from actually rotating. And the technology that they've developed actually takes Using their technology, they try and slow down that angular acceleration of the head. So it looks like a very promising technology. Once we saw the results, you know, that just reinforced the fact that we had to continue. We knew immediately that we uh, would need to have some professional athletes that were uh, interested in our uh, technology and our solution. I know Ziggy from way back. Um, I called him. He basically said, no, we're very interested. You know, this is something that we're very concerned about. So anything we can do uh, to uh, support the riders from a safety perspective, we're interested. It was good for me to understand all the working pieces behind it because, I mean, you can tell me you made us uh, 
a safer helmet and maybe I'd believe you. Knowing what I know now, it's hard to pass that up. Every time you hit, have a little small hit, small hit, small hit, that, that adds up to a big one. So, you know, if you can eliminate those kind of hits, you know, it's a, it's a plus. Right away when we, when we put the helmet on, there's, uh, there's comfort, which is great. And uh, beyond that, it's the safety factor that uh, they took a step forward in uh, designing a helmet that's gonna make everything safer for all of us. It's vented a lot more than, uh, than most helmets are. That's good, I think that's gonna come into play definitely outdoors. There's quite a few outdoor races where it's uh, 100 plus, so I think that would be uh, a big help there. You know, it's a job like anyone else, and to miss races is to miss money, so um, it's really cool that we get a, to be a part of it and uh, have a possibility to cut down injury. The one thing that is one of my things not to play with is the head injuries. So, like I said, anything that's going to help with that, I'm, I'm all on board for it. You know, they have the same data that we did when we made the decision, and, and they were all really, really happy to know that, that they had that on their head. The feeling of knowing that we've developed something that's going to contribute in a positive way to the athlete is really rewarding. Helmets aren't just a bucket that you're putting on your head, but as long as we are participating in sports that make us go faster or fly higher in particular in the air, gravity's always going to be there and dragging us down. We used to be worried about skull fractures and subdural hematomas and other more significant brain injuries, but now because a large uh, percentage of the population are sustaining concussions, you're seeing a lot of new research and new efforts to try and understand concussion. So hopefully all of this information will help us make better helmets and better forms of head protection. I think a lot about my son. I'm constantly afraid when we're out riding that he might hit his head. It feels great to think that I may be uh, able to have helped offset uh, the amount of injuries that somebody might sustain. I'm never satisfied and, and we'll keep looking and keep refining, but we've reached a point where we can't uh, sit and wait to say, well, we'll go get it better a little bit more, or we'll get it a little bit better. We have some significant energy reduction transfers within our technology and it's time to bring it to market. At the end of the day, it's going to be better for everybody because it's going to force um, the other manufacturers to address angular acceleration and low threshold energy. And that is really the most important part of the equation. And we want this kind of a solution in all helmets because everybody needs it.